Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here with my brand new guide for the Dead Heat Summer Race event in FGO NA. Just like with all my other event guides, this is going to be a very in-depth guide covering all aspects of the event, from the new servants to the efficient farm strategies to even the challenge quest. So to make things easier, I included timestamps in the description below so you can jump ahead to whichever part you need the most. I should also mention that in order to participate in this event, you need to have cleared Fuyuki, which is the first chapter of the game, and then you're good to go. And finally, this is a two-part event, so this guide is only going to be covering part one of the event. I'll have another guide out sometime soon that'll go over part two. But for now, let's get started with this event, covering the most important thing, the new servants. It's summer, and that means a whole bunch of new servants are going to be getting swimsuits and coming to FGO. Specifically, we're getting five new servants with just this part of the event. First, let's take a look at our welfare servant, Ishtar. She's going to be the free servant you get for completing the event. She's a rider servant with a max attack of 9,603 and a max HP of 10,692. Next up, we have four gotcha specific servants. We have the 5-star Nero Claudius, she is a 5-star caster with a max attack of 10,857 and a max HP of 13,685. She's especially good for those of you who are looking for an offensive caster. Following her, we have the 4-star Frankenstein, she is a Saber class with a max attack of 9,353 and a max attack of 11,993. She is another offensive servant that does a heavy amount of burst damage. Following her, we have the 4-star Nidocris Assassin with a max attack of 8,812 and a max HP of 11,518. She is an Arts Assassin that specializes in farming and limited defensive support. And finally, our last 4-star with this banner is going to be Oda Nobunaga Berserker. She is a Berserker with a max attack of 10,146 and a max HP of 10,023. A very unique Berserker that provides both good team support and power. I have spotlights for all of the new gacha servants, I'll list them below in the description and at the end of this video, so if you have any questions about them be sure to check out those spotlights, but for now, let's move on to talking about the craft essences. Along with those new servants, we'll also be getting 4 new craft essences, one of them is going to be purchasable in the shop, and the other 3 are going to only be available through the gacha. So let's talk about the gacha CEs first, starting with the 3 star one, Sugar Vacation. It increases defense by 3% and quick card effectiveness by 3%. It'll also increase the junk part drops by 2, and if you limit break it, the defense and quick card effectiveness will go up to 5%, and the junk part drops will increase by 3. This is an okay budget CE for some fragile quick servants, like Cursed Arm Hassan. Moving on, we have the 4 star White Cruising. It increases Arts and Buster Card effectiveness by 8%, as well as NP gain by 8%. It also increases Titan Plate drops by 2. And if you max limit break it, it's going to increase Arts, Buster, and NP gain by 10% and your Titan Plate drops by 3. This is an excellent craft essence for mixed deck attackers like Emiya and David, and it works wonders for offensive casters with Buster Noble Phantasms like Ilya, Nero, and Sanzo. It's a very strong craft essence for use even outside of the event. And finally, the last gotcha craft essence is Summer Little. It'll increase your NP gain by 25% and your NP strength and crit strength by 10%. It'll also increase mag wheel drops for the event by 2. If you limit break it, it's going to increase NP gain by 30%, NP strength and crit strength by 15%, and mag wheel drops by 3. Another excellent craft essence that is made for offensive NP spammers who can also crit. Servants like Okita, Gil, and Ryder Kentoki will benefit tremendously from the CE. And lastly, we have the event CE that you can purchase from the shop, Seaside Luxury. It'll increase your crit star drop rate by 20% and grant you 3 crit stars per turn. In addition, it's going to increase the drop rate of junk parts, titan plates, and mag wheels by 1. And if you max limit break it, it's going to increase your crit star drop rate by 25%, grant you 4 crit stars per turn, and increase all your drops by 2. This is definitely one of the better event CEs that you can get. It is excellent for star generating for supports, especially if you lack 2030. It's excellent on servants like Tamamo, Wu, and Cursed Armasan. Now that we've covered the event CEs, let's take a look at the shop. The event shop for summer this time around is no different from any other event shop. There's going to be three materials that you can trade in for different items. 
Those are going to be the mag wheels, the titan plates, and junk parts. You'll be able to trade in junk parts for a copy of Seaside Luxury, the golden reed ascension material, which is what Ishtar needs to be ascended, as well as phoenix plumes, poison stingers, spinal fluid, three star foes, and four star and three star experience. The iron plates will be traded in for another copy of Seaside Luxury, another ascension material for Ishtar, as well as primordial Loganos, Ghost Lanterns, Shells of Recollection, and Saber, Caster, Assassin, and Berserker pieces. And finally, the Mag Wheels will be traded in for two copies of Seaside Luxury, two copies of Ishtar's Ascension item, as well as Divine Wine, Black Tala, Forbidden Pages, Saber, Caster, Assassin, and Berserker monuments, and Mana Prisms. If you're wondering how much of each item you'll need in total if you plan to clear out the shop, you should aim to get 12,900 mag wheels, 10,600 plates, and 9,100 parts. It's also worth noting that there's only 4 copies of the event CE in the shop, so if you plan on limit breaking it, you have to get lucky and get a 5th copy to drop somewhere in the event while you're farming. Good luck with that. And it's also worth noting that you can trade in oil, gas, and nitro after the event for extra QP. And we'll get into talking about what those items are right now. This summer event is going to be completely unique in that it's unlike anything we've ever done in FGL before. It's going to be a race between six different teams across four different rounds. The teams for this race are going to be Tyrannical Shooting Star with Nero and Saber Alter, Electric Steam featuring Papa with Fran, Prefect of Public Decency and Monk Sansa with Raiko, Satisfaction HTE with Helena, Killer Demon of the X Heaven with Nobu, and Desert Beauty with Nidacris. These six teams are going to face each other in a heated race, and you will be able to support whichever team you want and help them to victory. Depending on which team wins each round, you'll be rewarded with something unique. So how does it work? Each round is going to have three different free quests available for each team. These free quests are going to be called Aid Battles. Whenever you complete an aid battle for a team, you're going to be awarded with points and they're going to be pushed further ahead in the race. So the more support one team gets, the more likely they are to win. This is going to be a server-wide event, very much like a raid event, which means the racer's progress is not dependent on just you, but the millions of other players playing the game as well. Once the racers have crossed the finish line, the round will end and the next round will begin, with the racers at the new starting line and new free quests available. This means you have a very limited time to farm each round usually about a day and a half to two days before the next round starts. And remember, each round has a different set of free quests for each racer. But don't worry because once all the rounds are done, you can go back and farm wherever you want for whatever shop item or drops you need. The biggest catch about the event though is that each racer is going to give you a different reward if they win. They each have a specific ascension map that they award you every round, and if they come in first, second, or third place, then every player will receive that ascension material. For round 1, Nero's team is going to be giving out Scarabs if they win, Helena will give out Chains, Nita will give out Dragon Fangs, Fran will give out Black Tallow, Nobu will give out Phoenix Plumes, and Raiko will give out Seashells. In round 2, Helena can give out Void Dust, Nero can give out Wine, Fran can give out Homunculus Babies, Nito can give out Yadrissal Seeds, Nobu's going to give out Bloodstone Tears, and Raiko's going to give out Octuplet Crystals. For round 3, Raiko gives out Spinal Fluid, Nobu gives out Reverse Dragon Scales, Nito gives out Bicorn Horns, Nero gives out Stingers, Fran gives out Talons of Chaos, and Helena will give out Infinity Gears. Finally, in the last round, Helena rewards Horseshoes, Nero rewards Snake Jewels, Nito can give out Gallstones, Raiko has Hearts, Fran has Longunos, and Nobu has Hero's Proof. If any of these racers come in first, second, or third place during their respective rounds, you will be given that reward as long as you did at least participate in one aid battle. Unfortunately though, whatever teams coming in fourth, fifth, or sixth for that round will not be giving you their ascension material, which means it becomes very strategic who you decide to support. So make sure you support whichever team has your waifu in it, or whichever team gives you the ascension material you need the most. The choice is yours. 
but at least make sure you complete one aid battle every round so that you're actually eligible to receive the rewards. Finally, much like how Onigashima has red, blue, and green beans that give your party buffs for the raids, the Dead Heat Summer Race has red, blue, and green nitro that will buff your party and give the racers you are aiding a bigger boost. Using these items is the best way to help the racer you want to win, and each team has a different preference. For example, if you use the Buster Gasoline on Nero and Raiko, they're going to get a much bigger boost than any other team. If you use the Arts Nitro on Helena or Nidocris, they'll get a bigger boost, and if you use the Quick Oil on Fran or Nobu, they'll get a bigger boost. So make sure you plan accordingly and use the proper item for the proper team. And the reason why you're going to be using these items and why it matters is because you're going to be rewarded QP at the end of each round depending on how many support points you have. And when you use these items, you're going to be adding more support points to yourself. So the best way to put it is, the more you help the racers, the more QP you're going to get at the end. So that covers the basics of the race, but just like every other event, there's still going to be a bit of story attached to it, so let's talk about the main quest itself. Main quests appear in the middle and ends of each round, and you cannot progress through the rounds until you finish the main quest. So in order to start the races, there's going to be a few main quests to do, most of them are just story though. And then in each round, once the racers reach the midline, there's another main quest, and then once they reach the end, there's another main quest before the next round begins. So even if round 2 begins, you won't be able to farm it or participate in it until you finish the main quest for round 1. So make sure you keep up to date. It's a fun, lighthearted event, so the quests are extremely easy, and in fact, like I said, most of them are just story without any battles. Even if you just started playing the game this week to start this event, you have nothing to fear as long as you're able to clear Fuyuki, you can clear this event's story with just using the guest servants because they're powerful enough to solo it. For those of you looking to unlock Ishtar, unfortunately you don't unlock her permanently until part 2. Once you finish part 1's story, you get a temporary copy of Ishtar. You can ascend and level up the temporary copy, but it'll be wasted unless you get the permanent copy from beating part 2, so make sure you do do that. And if you do level and ascend Ishtar, don't worry, once she becomes permanent, all those stats and levels will be transferred over. Let's talk about the meat of the event, which as always, is farming. What's the most efficient way to farm? Well, despite the event having nearly 100 free quests across 4 different rounds, Farming for these shop items is very straightforward. Firstly, you're going to want to roll the friend point gacha for the 3 star CE and get as many of them as you can. Make sure you prioritize the event CE from the shop as well because it boosts all item drops making it excellent for farming. You don't even need to roll the gacha to be able to farm this event efficiently. However, do not max limit break the event CE unless you have a lot of gacha CEs to use in place of it. Unless you have two or more of each of the gacha CEs, do not max limit break Seaside Luxury. It's better to have four separate copies attached to four separate servants. Aside from the CEs, you also have bonus servants that are going to increase your drop rates. All of the new servants are going to increase your drop rates by two, that includes Caster Nero, Fran, Ishtar, Assassin Nido, Berserker Nobu, as well as the Part 2 servants which are going to be Maid Altar Rider, Helena Archer, and Raiko Lancer. On top of that though, a bunch of servants also are going to add plus one to all of your drops, that includes Archer Arturia, Orion, Moriarty, Tesla, Summer Tamamo, MHX, Sanzo, Caster of the Nightless City, Atlante, Anne and Mary Summer, Kyohime Summer, Ryder Mordred, Assassin Skahawk, Thomas Edison, Caster Marie, Eldorado Berserker, Ruler Martha, Bonica, and Babbage. So I do recommend using all of these servants in your team if you have them whenever you're farming. Even if you put them in the back row, you're still getting that plus one or plus two to your drops. As for what places you want to farm at, the best places to farm each shop item depend on the round. Of course, the higher the difficulty, the better the drops, so you're going to want to farm whatever the highest difficulty you're able to do. So let's go through this round by round, discussing what the best place to farm each item is on each round. For round 1, the best place to farm the junk parts is going to be Helena's free quest. The best place to farm the silver plate is going to be in Nero's free quest. 
and the best place to farm the wheels is going to be in Nido's free quest. For round two, you're going to want to farm junk parts in Nido's area. You can farm the silver plates on Fran's free quest, and you can farm the wheels in Helena's free quest. Moving on to round three, the best place to farm junk parts is going to be Nobu's team, the best place to farm silver plates is going to be Nido's team, and the best place to farm the wheels is going to be Raiko's team. And finally, when you reach round four, the best farming spots are going to be Helena for junk parts, Nero and Saber Altar for silver plates, and Nido Chris for wheels. So depending on the round, those are going to be the places you're going to want to farm for those respective shop items. Remember, even if you miss farming in a certain round, after all four rounds are complete, you can go back and farm there again. So make sure you pick whichever place you can farm most comfortably, depending on what your roster is and what enemies you're up against or what ascension materials those locations drop. It is worth noting that after the four rounds are over and right before part two begins, we may be getting a new overheat difficulty, which appears for each team and it has a slightly better drop rate for all the items, but you don't have to wait for that to appear to start farming, it's not worth it. The drop rates are good enough even at the beginning of the event and you don't wanna miss out farming any round at all so that you can get that QP. In other words, start farming from day one. Aside from just farming for shop items, you're also going to want to be farming for ascension materials. This event is going to be a very good spot to get a lot of rare ascension materials at good rates. So let's go over what the best farming spots are, and all of this information is going to be coming from Lord Ashura. He does excellent work creating guides for new and upcoming events in FGO. I'll include a link to his website in the description below, so you guys can go over and check it out for yourselves. I highly encourage doing so and supporting him because he does excellent work. Now let's take a look at the essential materials. Starting from round one, you're going to be able to farm spinal fluids and bicorn horns from the Nero and Salter nodes. Chains and Bicorn Horns from the Frankenstein nodes. Raiko is going to drop Spinal Fluids, Gears, and Bicorn Horns. Helene is going to drop Chains and Bicorn Horns. Nobu is going to drop Chains, Gears, and Bicorns. And Nidocris is going to drop Gears and Bicorn Horns. Moving on to round two, we see that Nero is going to be dropping Serpent Jewels, Octuplet Crystals, and Spirit Roots. Frankenstein is going to be dropping Octuplet Crystals and Lamps. Raiko is going to be dropping Poison Needles, Serpent Jewels, and Spirit Roots. Helena is going to be dropping Serpent Jewels and Lamps. Nobu is going to be dropping Poison Needles, Octuplet Crystals, and Spirit Roots. And finally, Nido is going to be dropping Poison Needles and Lamps. Round 3 is going to have Nero dropping Serpent Jewels, Seashells, and Scarabs. Frankenstein will be dropping Feathers, Seashells, and Scarabs. Raiko will be dropping Serpent Jewels and Claws. Elena is going to be dropping feathers, serpent jewels, and scarabs. Nobu is going to be dropping seashells and claws. And Nidocris is going to be dropping feathers and claws. And finally, in the last round, round four, Nero and Salter will be dropping pages and gallstones. Frankenstein's nodes are going to have fangs, pages, and gallstones. Raiko will have seeds, pages, and gallstones. Helena has seeds and gallstones. Nobunaga has fangs, seeds, and gallstones and Nidocris has fangs and gallstones. So take note of all those locations, and again, if you forget them, head over to Lord Ashura's site, and he has them all listed there. But there is one more aspect of this event that we need to take a look at, and that is the challenge quest. Once all four rounds are finished and you're done with part one, there's going to be several challenge quests that open up that are going to reward you with gold foes, and the last one is even going to reward you with a crystal lore. So let's take a look at those. The first one is going to be featuring Atlante, and this is going to be a challenging one because she's going to be able to spam evade, and she's also going to be able to pierce evade and invincibility. There's also an annoying mix of Saber and Lancer enemies before you fight her, which can make team building pretty complicated. But I do suggest bringing your strongest single target Lancer, like Skahawk, Ku, or Brynhilda, and then focus on bringing defensive buffing supports and healers, like Mosh and Tamamo, rather than invincibility or evade, like Merlin. The second challenge quest is going to be up against Bodica, but she's going to be of the Avenger class which is going to make things significantly harder if you don't have BB. However, if you have BB, that makes this fight very easy. Alternatively, you can go with a defense ignoring berserker like Lubu or Kentoki because Bodica is going to be giving herself a lot of defense buffs. 
The third challenge quest is going to be up against Eldorado Berserker, and her gimmick is going to be that she's going to do a lot of damage in the beginning turns of the fight at the cost of her defense. The best thing to do for this challenge quest is to make sure you have someone who can protect your team from being one shot on turn one or two like Merlin, Mosh, or Waver, and make sure you bring a very powerful anti-female servant like Carmilla or Jack who will absolutely melt Eldorado Berserker. Next up, the fourth challenge quest is going to be up against Orion. And this one isn't too complicated. All you gotta do is bring your best Lancer and a very good support for them. If Orion manages to NP you in the second phase, it could very likely kill you. So make sure you have invincibility or evade available to protect yourself. Finally, the last challenge quest, which awards a crystal lore, is just going to be a straight boss rush. You'll be facing off against all of the summer servants from the first summer event. So Summer Kyohime, Summer Mordred, Summer Tamamo, Marie, and Bonnie, Martha, Arturia, and Skahawk. And there's nothing really noteworthy or special about this, it is just a gauntlet. So the best way to deal with this is bring your AoE Berserker like Frankenstein, Lancelot, Kyohime, or Raiko, and just bring a support Merlin and a support Waver, and you should absolutely tear through this easily. This isn't Nerofest, so you don't need to worry about what order they need to be killed in, or if they have any kind of crazy buffs, just lay on the damage. And that about wraps up everything I have to say about this event. To recap, getting Ishtar by completing the main quest is your top priority, and it's very easy to do even if you're a brand new player. Your second priority should be getting the Shopcraft Essence as soon as possible, and remember, you do not max limit break it unless you have two or more of each gotcha craft essence. After that, go for whatever you need the most from the shop, depending on what servants you have and what ascension materials you need. Try to do as many aid battles as you can every round, and try to use the nitro items in order to maximize the amount of QP you can get. Once part 1 is finished and all 4 rounds are over, make sure you're able to go back and complete the challenge quest if you can, they're very much worth doing for those extra foes and the crystal lore. And you should also go back to the previous free quest from the different rounds to farm any ascension materials that you need. And if this video did help you, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can catch part 2 when it comes out. And if you haven't already, do check out the spotlights for the new servants coming out. I have each of them linked in the description below. Also, make sure you join the Discord, follow us on Twitter, and follow us on Twitch. And until next time, this is Sobroni, signing out. Later.